Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. Back in September, during the Simon Says Stamp Stamptember event, I shared a card using one of Simon's background stamps. I mentioned that this card started with a sheet of pink cardstock, and I got a lot of questions about it and also a lot of requests to do a video to show how the card was made. I finally have the video ready and happy to share it with you. In case you're wondering why I've been so quiet lately and why I've been sharing less than usual, that's because I've started learning how to drive. Fun fact, I'm 32 and I never learned how to drive a car. So I have finally decided it was time to learn and now I'm going to drive to driving school four times a week and it's draining a lot of my free time, leaving me less time for card making. But this is something I really need to learn, and I hope you'll stick with me during this three-month period. Anyhow, this card was also shared during my latest Simon Says Stamp Instagram takeover. And if you follow Simon on Instagram, and if you watch their stories, you might have already seen it. Now, if you haven't seen it, you are in luck. But even if you have seen it, I hope you will enjoy this video as I will go into details about the what and why and all that good stuff. I've started to work on my card by using a misty stamping tool and heat embossing the gorgeous Flora background stamp in silver embossing powder on light blue cardstock. This is Surf Blue by Simon Says Stamp. I've done all the usual things for heat embossing and have already inked up my stamp with clear embossing ink and have stamped the image onto the paper. You can try the technique I'm sharing with other stamps, but I honestly haven't really been able to find a stamp, a background stamp in my stash with which I could replicate this idea. So I guess this technique in this tutorial is applicable specifically to this background stamp. I've used a silver embossing powder here to heat set the outline. You can change the colors obviously and go with gold, rose gold, white, whatever your heart desires. I think this background looks stunning in just any color. I use my heat tool to heat set the powder and melt it in place. Then I trim the background to a more manageable size to four and a quarter by five and a half inches actually. And this will make the front of my card. I will be doing a lot of coloring in my next step and I don't really want to color anything that's not going to be used on a card to avoid wasting the ink from my Copic markers. I'm going to start by coloring the background. This seems odd, coloring the background very odd, but the idea here is to use colored cardstock that will represent the color of the flowers. So whatever color you want your flowers to be, use that color of paper for the background. For this card, I use pink. Here, I want the flowers to be blue, so I'm using blue. Now, why are we doing it this way? We are doing it this way, the reverse way, because you can't really color with Copics on dark cardstock. You cannot take a light blue marker and color black paper to make it blue, but you can color blue paper to make it black. So we're just doing it backwards in a way to color the negative space and keep the positive space the color that we want. Now, if you aren't comfortable coloring with Copic markers next to the heat embossing, I do have a great video tutorial showing a work around that. I have a link right here. Be sure to watch it. You basically first stamp the image in alcohol marker friendly ink. You color it. Then you heat emboss the same image over your colored one so there's no coloring next to the heat embossing. You do need a stamping tool, a stamp platform or a misty or something like that to be able to do this technique. I'm using a C9 marker, not a black one, as I don't really want a true black background. You can use any marker color you like to color the background of your card. You can even go a step further and use several colors and add deeper shadows right next to the images. And this will breathe life into your background. It will make it more dynamic and more interesting to look at. But it's also going to take a lot more time. I'm happy with just having dark, deep backgrounds. So I'm using one marker color for now. And here's the result. There is a world of a difference and these heat embossed flowers already look amazing. 
but we're going to add more to them with the help of some shading. I want to preserve the main flower color, but at the same time, I want to add shading to the base of the flower, to the base of the petals. I'm doing this with the help of additional markers, and I'm going with teal colors, BG18, BG15, BG32, and BG11. As I add shading, this instantly helps to define the petals and makes the flower a lot more prominent on the background. Same on the pink card. I used several pink markers, RV32, RV11, and RV10 to color the flowers pink. You can go as detailed as you like when coloring flowers or just add simple strokes of color. Either way, this is a beautiful stamp and these images already look gorgeous. The background cardstock color provides a stunning base for the flowers and that allows us to spend a lot less time coloring them. Of course, you can use white cardstock as a base, but that will require a lot more time and a lot more ink from your markers to color it. Here, we are completely skipping coloring the tips of the flowers as they are already the color we want them to be. And here's the look at the finished colored background and also at the one done in pink. Both, I think, are simply stunning. From here, you can use your favorite sentiments to complete the card. I used a sentiment from the School Days Grow stamp set and I heat embossed it in the same silver embossing powder on a piece of vellum. Now, vellum is a tricky material to adhere without the adhesive showing, so I planned the vellum strip to be longer so that I could wrap it around the card panel and adhere it from the back. I did all the usual things to heat emboss the sentiment, and now I'm using the heat tool to melt the powder in place. The sentiment reads, thank you for believing in me. I wrapped the vellum panel around the colored panel and then used double-sided tape to secure it in place. Next, I adhere the background onto an A2 white card base, and to dress this card up, I used clear droplets from Pretty Pink Posh and adhered to several here and there overlapping the embossing and the colored background. I used my Crystal Katana tool and Simon's Craft Techie Glue to adhere these in place. And finally, I added some simple stamping to the back of the card. I hardly ever do this, but with the new stamp set from Simon, I cannot resist. It is simply perfect to add some simple messaging to the back of our handmade projects. This stamp set is called Handcrafted with Love. I picked a stamp that says Stamped with Love and stamped it in black ink on the bottom portion of the back panel of my card. And now the card is done. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will give this technique and this idea a try. If you do, please share online and tag me. I always love seeing what you guys are making. If you're new here, do subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about every new upload. Love you guys, and hopefully I'll see you next week.